but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Let me tell you about my great God. Hey guys, Pastor Tim here. Hope you guys are doing great. Hope you're ready to get your day started off in God's Word. We are on 2 Kings chapter 23, and this is kind of a, uh, a special video for me because this is actually, since we started uh, this, this Daily in the Word series, this is actually the 100th video we've done in that series so far. So we have covered 100 chapters of the Bible thus far, starting in 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, and now in 2 Kings as well. And if you guys have stayed with me during that entire time, praise the Lord, because uh, it's definitely nothing uh, for me. It just shows the faithfulness you've had in being in God's Word and, and trying and striving to get something out of it each and every day that you could tell other people about your great God. And that's what it's all about. So this 100 video, by no mean is it uh, something to do with me. It, I think it's just a great thing that if you stayed with uh, with, through the series this entire time just showed your faithfulness and your desire to want to learn more about God and if you have jumped in um, towards the end here or just with second Kings or whatever it may be understand hey obviously that means we got over 70 videos previously that you can get into previous books of the Bible that maybe you want to learn more about or maybe you just you know want that aid and accountability and, and that's the goal of the entire series is to be a help to people uh, when they're studying God's Word, and it's also to help keep people accountable. Do you know what? Each and every day I'm going to read God's Word and try to get something out of it that I can tell somebody about. And hopefully you're doing that with your accountability partner. Hopefully you're being faithful in your journals each and every day, writing things down, interesting things, questions you have, things that, uh, um, that just really grab a hold of your attention, whatever it may be, write it down. It doesn't matter if it's theologically important. It doesn't matter if it's just a, a minute detail. Hey, if it grabs your attention, write it down because it shows you're actively involved in the reading of God's Word. You're not just doing it to check something off your list. You're not just doing it um, to be a good Christian for today. You're actually doing it because you want to learn more about your great God. And also along with that goal, tell somebody about your great God, what you got out of His Word today. So I'm if anything, I'm just thankful and I'm praising the Lord that I've been able to do this series. And I'm thankful that God has given me the grace to be faithful in, in getting to this 100th video. And I'm not planning on stopping anytime soon. Uh, after we're done with 2 Kings, which we're getting close to the end of, we're actually going to go over to the book of Judges. And I think that's a very inter a lot of interesting things happen in the book of Judges. And I can't wait to go through it. I know my teenagers are going to love it as well. And, uh, you know, tell somebody about this series that, you know, use it as something to help them just get more out of their Bible reading and help keep them accountable as well. And you know what? Do it along with them as well. Just build up that camaraderie, build up that communication and form those strong bonds between brothers and sisters in Christ as well. Anyway, enough of that. This isn't what the series is about. Yes, 100 videos is great, but let's get into God's Word. We are on 2 Kings chapter 23. And um, we're, we're still on King uh, Josiah. We pick up uh, after he found the word of God, and it's a great thing. Uh, the law of God was found in the old temple. The priest brought it to Josiah. They read it to him, and he realizes, oh, snap, we need to get some things taken care of. All right, Judah, there's imminent judgment coming from God because of all the continual sin from Manasseh and previous kings before Josiah, and that wasn't going to stop. We, we found that out in the last chapter. That was still going to come, all right, but it would not come in the days of Josiah. But Josiah wasn't going to let that stop him from doing the right thing and getting cleaning house, so to speak, in, in Judah and getting the people of Judah to focus back on following the Lord. So they read the word of the of God in front of all the people. All right. Josiah is laying it all out there. Hey, this is what's going to happen. This is God's word. This is what we've done wrong. And this is what we're going to do to correct it. And he just, you know, the chapter continues just to show him going through all of Judah and just cleaning house. He's tearing down altars. He's tearing down houses. He's getting rid of uh, people who are practicing sin. He's getting rid of uh, the false prophets that were worshiping Baal and other gods and so forth. And if you notice, it's really interesting to see uh, some of the paganness and some of the idolatry that dates way back, even all the way to the time of Solomon, we even see. And just how Judah allowed that to linger. And kind of, you know what? Probably in the time of Solomon, it wasn't that big a thing. But sin has that tendency to just build and grow. And I always describe it as the snowball effect of sin. It might have started a little smaller with Solomon, but it just obviously just continued to grow. And when you neglect 
to take care of one sin in your life, it's going to become that much easier to just continue to neglect and uh, other sins in your life as well. And it will grow. And before you realize it, it's a bigger problem than you thought it was to begin with. And so it's just interesting to note that. So he takes care of that. He cleans it all out. We do get an interesting moment here where he finds the original altar that Jeroboam, the king, uh, made after Solomon uh, the, to a false god. And we also see the bones of the prophet that warned Jeroboam about what would happen if he continued to worship false gods. That goes back to 1 Kings chapter 13. So we see this prophecy fulfilled. I'll put the text up here. That way you guys have an idea of you know what was happening all right, and how Josiah fulfilled that prophecy. Uh, and then we get to um, the death of Josiah, pretty much. So we get to the end of his life. Egypt is coming into the land, but they're not coming to fight Judah. That's very important to note. They're actually coming because they want to go and fight Assyria, which should be the enemy of Judah. But for some reason, all that we see in this chapter is Josiah decides, you know what, I'm going to fight against Egypt. No real reasons given. They're not really there to fight Judah, but Josiah doesn't care. He wants to fight uh, the king of Egypt, and he ends up dying uh, because of that. And they bury him back in Jerusalem. Now, if you read, and now I, I encourage you, do read Second Chronicles chapter 35. All right, I'll put the text up here as well. Second Chronicles chapter 35. What we find out is that Josiah did not seek the Lord in this matter. And not only that, it is implied that he actually went against the will of God in this matter. Pharaoh's saying, hey, God has sent me to go and fight the king of Assyria. I have no quarrel with you, but Josiah ignores that and he does it anyway. He even tries to disguise himself and it doesn't work because when you're out of the will of God, it doesn't matter how you try to hide yourself or disguise yourself. You know, bad things are going to happen and he ends up dying because of that. So that's a very interesting way to see this great king who is doing all these great things for the Lord. And, and that's how it ends for him. All right. By Possibly, you know, disobeying the will of God and deciding to fight the king of Egypt instead of just staying home. And so we get to the end of his life. He dies. He, they, they bury him. And so now they have this thing with Egypt uh, going on. And, and so there's one son that gets on the throne. And uh, the king of Egypt takes him away after a couple months and brings him back to Egypt. And the king of Egypt actually appoints uh, Jeho Jehoiakim to be the next king of Judah. Jehoiakim was just another son of Josiah. And he kind of has him in the palm of his hand. Now, Jehoiakim he was not a good king. And not only that, he was kind of bound to the king of Egypt as well, always having to pay back uh, taxations and tribute to him uh, during his reign. Now, main thing I got out of this chapter is mainly in that first big chunk. All right, you see Josiah cleaning the house and, and so forth. And in the midst of that portion of the chapter, towards the end of it, we see the Bible says that, you know, where there is no king before Josiah or after him in Judah that served the Lord that is God with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his mind. And, and it very much reminds me of what Christ said um, to his disciples as well, you know, hey, to serve God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And we see the results of that. He, he wanted to get rid of every sin. He wanted to put his focus back on following the Lord. And that's what happens when you have that a fully surrendered mindset. And that's what each and every Christian should have. Have that fully surrendered mindset on my heart, on my soul, on my mind to follow God and serve Him. That's what it means to be truly surrendered. And Josiah, during most of his reign, he was fully surrendered to follow the Lord. That's all I got for today's video, guys. I hope you have a great day. Tell somebody about your great God, what you got out of His Word. And I hope you continue this journey with me through uh, video 100 to 101 and so forth. And who knows if we get to 200. Uh, but this is a blessing. I enjoy doing it. Doing it. Stay safe. Stay healthy. God bless.